Lance Short, a senior product specialist for Green Hippo. So what is Green Hippo? So Green Hippo started back in 2000 with the aim to create real-time video solutions. The founders, James and Sean, worked both in rental and staging, but mostly doing corporate events like conferences and exhibitions. But they were also involved in a claim, uh, range of club installs. When great gaming graphics cards began to take off, Sean and James saw an opportunity. They took these cards and developed their own software and hardware based around them to create one of the first real-time media servers, Hippotizer. First playing PAL video, then HD, till today, where we're playing back 8K content at 60 frames per second. So what is a Hippotizer exactly? You could think of Hippotizer as a fully configurable video input and output toolkit, configurable for 2D or 3D projects. Uh, you can use Hippotizer to map video to screens, LED walls, lights, and projectors. So here's the full range of Hippotizer media servers. At the top, you can see the baby amber there. That can handle one 4K output. Then you have the cast with two outputs, the Boreal with four outputs, and the Montaigne with two outputs. And then at the bottom, the Tiger with six 4K outputs. So I should mention the uh, Montaigne only has two outputs because it's designed to handle real-time generative effects. So all of these hypnotizers run exactly the same software. They support SDI, DVI, HDMI, DisplayPort, and NDI in and out. We also have Hippotizer prep dongles uh, for your laptop. They're designed for you to learn, pre-program, and encode your content. And we also have a free to download demo on the website that lets you try everything out with one mix and a watermarked output. So what kind of events is Hippotizer used on now? Let's take a look.
<laughs> so I would say about 70% of those shows were using Cinema 4D in some way or another. So as you saw, Hippotizer has such a wide variety of uses from live TV shows, theme parks, shopping malls, rock and roll, cruise ships, corporate events, art installations, gyms, architectural and theater. So let's take a look at how to set that up. So this is the output configuration page. Let me just grab my laser here. Down the left hand side, you can see all the Hippotizer that are in the rack. And at the top, you can see this green line around the outside means that this one is currently selected. Uh, on the right hand side, we have a mix here that's running on this uh, machine. And Hippotizer is a layer based system, so this mix contains the layers. So you select your layer, and on the right hand side, we have all the outputs that are connected to this machine. So the process of patching to your output is you select your mix, you select the output, and then you hit new patch in the middle, and that links them together. OK, so here we have the mixes page. So on the left-hand side, you can see all the different mixes playing on all the different machines. And across the top, you can see the layers that's running on this currently selected mix. So this has got eight layers. You can have up to 16 layers. So on this layer one that's currently selected, underneath that, we have the uh, source window. We're currently playing a video. Here you can see the clip info. You can really quickly and easily adjust the in and out points. You can adjust the speed of the clip. You can lock it to time code, different play modes. You've got all the controls you need. On the right-hand side here, we've got the geometry. You can simply uh, click on this and move it around inside the canvas. And down here, we have some simple color effects. You've got brightness, contrast, hue, shift, some red, green, blue additive effects. And then uh, here we've got two uh, banks of uh, real-time effects that you could add to the content, up to about 50 in each. They've got things like blur, super 8, tilt shift, kaleidoscope, all the, all the classic kind of effects you need. So once you've made the look that you need, you can come down to the preset window at the bottom. You hit record, you uh, click into a space, and you can save that preset there. And then you would make a few more presets, and then you can just simply click on those presets, and the Hippotizer will crossfade into them for you. So that's the most basic way you can control a Hippotizer. So the Hippotizer layer we just looked at has around 130 parameters. So in Hippotizer, any parameter, whether it be a string, a bool, int, or float, we call it a pin. Now, you can imagine when you get stuck and you do shows with as many hippos as this, uh, you have a lot of parameters to control. So this is made easy by our HippoNet protocol. HippoNet shares the pin info across the network, so every machine has the ability to see and control one another. The GUI application we use to view this is called Zookeeper. It keeps the hippos. So you can control Hippotizer in so many different ways. Here we have the timeline. It's very similar to any other timeline. You simply grab the pen tool and you go through adding keyframes where you need them. But you can also drag presets into the timeline that we made earlier. So a preset will keyframe the timeline with all the parameters it holds, making it fast to update up to 130 parameters in one go. Now, arguably, one of the most common ways to control Hippotizer is using a lighting desk. <coughs> After all, projector is effectively just a, a big fancy light. So this enables you to get your hypnotizer to be programmable by the same person operating the lights, making the workflow seamless between the two. You can also control hypnotizer using all these presets. And plus is uh, all these protocols, sorry. Uh, and plus is a wireless signal allowing you to hook up, say, a heart rate monitor to control video. Uh, we also have Black Tracks, Disney Entertainment Automation Protocol, MIDI, OSC, TCP. And we can also send ArtNet, MIDI, OSC, TCP, and UDP out. So these could be used to trigger other third-party hardware and software like fans or video recorders or projector shutters, things like that. 
So media management. Media management in any environment can become a nightmare quickly if it isn't under control. So that's why we have a dedicated component to deal with it. It's called Media Manager. It's, of course, very important to any media server, but Hippotizer has proven itself time and time again to have a great media management system, and it's one of our biggest selling points. Hippotizer also has watch folders, so you can automatically upload content from network drives. You can upload proxy versions to quickly preview in our visualizer, and you can easily sync between main and backup machines with just one click. Now, when you upload a file to Hippotizer, we encode it to FlexRes. That's our own codec designed by Green Hippo for real-time requirements. Uh, we have FlexRes plugins for Adobe products so that you can encode straight to FlexRes out of After Effects, Premiere, or Media Encoder. And we have three main flavors of FlexRes. FlexRes Performance, that lets you play loads of layers. FlexRes Quality, that looks a bit better. And FlexRes Lossless and Uncompressed if you need that full quality. So that's all great, but why is Cinema 4D important to our workflow? Well, put simply, Cinema 4D makes awesome videos that look great, and we love to play them. The interface is intuitive and fast to make stage designs. It has fantastic modeling and UV mapping tools that are, of course, important for projection mapping. And because it's our user's most popular choice of 3D software already, we chose to support its native file format, .cinema 4D. So there's lots of different ways you can map video in Hippotizer. You can use Video Mapper to map video to LED walls or screens. You can use Pixel Mapper to map video to lights. Or you can use Hippotizer Shape to do 3D projection mapping. So here's an example of Video Mapper made in Cinema 4D being played back through uh, Video Mapper at Nike Town London. So this video. Uh, I found out yesterday it was actually made by Matthias, who was talking uh, yesterday, which is quite funny. Uh, so Video Mapper is the process of arranging content uh, on the screen, uh, and, it's, and it's really straightforward. So here on the left, you can see the component, and we simply just add a few tiles, and we put them where we want to sample, and then on the right-hand side, it goes to Output Manager, and then that handle was the patching that we did earlier. <coughs> So let's just take a look at the making of that one. The store closed at 12 p.m. at night, and we had to have it ready for 8 in the morning. Once the screens are up, you can see I've stepped in here behind a Zookeeper. <coughs> the actual media servers are around the back. You can see that proved uh, really popular. So here's an example of the most popular way Video Mapper is used to map LED tiles. This was a Eurovision 2016. So on the top left, you can see the real stage that's video mapped. And on the right, you can see the model in Cinema 4D that are UV mapped to, make, uh, to match the video mapper. Uh, and on the bottom left, you can see the final output. So Pixel Mapper, this is a process of mapping the intensity and color of a pixel or a group of pixels um, to drive DMX fixtures. So on the bottom left here, you can see the model that was used for the visualizer that I UV mapped in Cinema 4D to match the real pixel mapping. 
The operators of the show are actually sitting in a different room to where the actual performance is happening. So they need a hypnotizer's real-time visualizer to be able to visualize any parts of the set before the camera cuts there. So let's just take a really uh, quick look at Pixel Mapper in action. Okay, we really don't need to listen to the uh, to, to this, but uh, I'll, I'll move on. You get the idea. Now, some people get really creative with mapping video. These guys decided to use the intensity of a pixel to drive a small motor that pushes grass up through the floor. So imagine what you could do with a room full of motors and Cinema 4D effectors uh, affecting them. Okay, you get the idea. Now here we go, Shape. Shape started its life as a special application for one of our unique clients. It was called Ape, the architectural projection engine. But after a few years and some tweaking, we, we uh, released it to the public as Shape. Now uh, let's take a look at the 3D projection mapping workflow. So the first job is you need to get yourself a model. Maybe you've designed the set so that you have the model already. Maybe you have access to the BIM or CAD model for the structure. But typically, we end up either getting a laser scan or photogrammetry done of the model. The picture here shows the process of uh, photogrammetry. I walked around the building taking photos from all the positions shown and then put them through a photogrammetry application to get the model. So photogrammetry is really fast, it's cheap, However, it has its limitations. It doesn't work well on shiny surfaces or windows or really dark shadows. It isn't millimeter accurate. It creates quite complex mesh that usually needs a good amount of retopology. But to be honest, for the price, it gets the job done pretty, pretty well. Then you have laser scans. Laser scan models are millimeter accurate. However, the scanners are really expensive. But you'll find lots of companies offering scan services. They'll visit the site for you, scan the building, and deliver you a finished model. I say finished, but usually the model still needs a bit of cleanup in Cinema 4D, to say the least. So how to apply video to the model? Do we just render using a camera for projection mapping, or do we need to UV the, um, the model? Should we bake in those UVs? This is a really interesting topic when projection mapping, but to put extremely simply, if you're doing some fake light and shadow tricks on the building, it's best to UV it. However, if you're doing some building manipulation or you want other objects flying around, then you should be uh, rendering to your camera. Okay, so you've decided how you're going to apply your video, and then it's time to get creative. So I'm going to show a piece here by Battle Royale for Mad Sack's 125th birthday. Um, it also features a really simple real-time generative effect. And as you can see up in the top left here is a 21 projector blend. So um, yeah, let's take a look at this. So you can see Kevin from uh, 10 feet here actually is uh, using a DMX to control hypnotizer. And you can see the feedback from uh, cameras is watching it on there.
Okay, so this bit gets interesting. You may have noticed across their back, they've got uh, infrared LEDs. Each person has got a different frequency of uh, infrared. Then we have these three cameras uh, with filters, IR filters on the front of them to filter out each person. So each camera sees its individual one. We then uh, composite that into one uh, image and then we send that into real-time generative effects engine and we do some blob tracking so we can get the exact position, uh, X and Y position of each person and then we can use that to generate particles. So that's how they, um, in a moment you'll see them drawing ink on the building. So there it goes. I think they were going to have the people swinging around on the building, but it became a little bit too dangerous. <laughs> okay, so you kind of get the idea of what's happening there. So I contacted Duncan, who did this in uh, Cinema 4D, and uh, asked him to send me over a little something of, uh, of the project. So up on the top right here, you can see the, the camera. And we're going to see a little movement of the camera inside Cinema 4D. And then we're going to see how that looked on the building. Okay, so it's really straightforward. <laughs> it's just moving up the building. So let's see how that looks on a, on a full-size building. Has that begun? So they just got to pull these levers down to get the machine started, otherwise uh, the video wouldn't play. There we go. Okay, so it didn't look very exciting up there, but <laughs> it looks pretty exciting when you see it on the building. Okay. So once you've made your content, you import that video into Hypotizer using Media Manager. And then it's time to import your Cinema 4D file into Shape. So here at the top left, you can see uh, the file. This uh, file actually made by Jonas here uh, inside Cinema 4D. So you've got the camera and you've got your, uh, this church here. And then in the middle, you can see the shape import window. And in there, you can see it recognizes there was a camera in the scene and there was a model in the scene. So you can choose what you want to import. And then there's a little uh, drop down menu next to the camera. So it says, do you want to use this camera as a projector inside shape? Or do you want to use this as a perspective texture mapper? And in this case, we need to use it as a perspective texture mapper. Okay. So once you've done that and you've got that in, it's time to add some projectors. So in shape, now we've added a projector. We need to uh, line it up to, uh, to the real position of the projector. So to do that, it's a pretty straightforward uh, process. You simply select a vertex on the model. And then you press Enter on the hippo, and you get a crosshair appear on your output. And then you use your arrow keys to move that around until it hits the same point on the building of what you've selected. And you do that four times, and then it can figure out exactly where your projector is, and it will match. Okay. So this is a typical real-world alignment setup. This was me aligning the projectors for the permanent projection installation of the Burj Al Arab in Dubai. We had 14 40K projectors, uh, Barco ones. They were projecting up the 300-meter sail. So in the middle, you can see a shape there. I've uh, extracted just the bit we need to project on, just the sail in the middle. Um, you can see I've got a pair of binoculars, so I can actually see what I'm doing on the building. It's a pretty important tool. 
Um, yeah, so that alignment process for that building took one night. Okay, we had four Boreals that were in the basement of the Burj Al Arab, and then we was running fiber out to the beach uh, on top of the kitchen, which was the reinforced roof, and we had the seven projectors there. And then we had another uh, seven projectors that were dotted around on top of villas further away. They need to be that far to, to get up to that height. Okay. So if you know how to use Cinema 4D, and if you know how to use Green Hippo media servers, and you've got two years spare, you could uh, come up with something like this. Okay, so if anyone has any questions about any of those projects or Green Hippo, then uh, you can email me at uh, lands at green hippocom or come and ask me a question now. <laughs> yeah? Okay, thank you. <laughs>